Hey, sixth graders, welcome to the final lesson for chapter one. And um, we're going to finish up talking about technology and map making before your test today. Um, have you, uh, you think about having a, a hot cup of coffee or hot cup of uh, hot chocolate in front of you and you, you can see the steam coming off of the top and as you reach for it you kind of can can feel that the mug is very hot and you pick it up and hold it towards your face and you feel the heat coming off of it and you say no 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 this is way too hot to drink so you set it down so i'm gonna wait for this to cool off and what you've done is you just avoided burning your mouth by using remote sensing that's one of your vocabulary words here Remote sensing that is the process of collecting information about an area without coming into physical contact with it. So you were able to collect information about that hot cup of coffee or hot chocolate uh, without actually burning your mouth, without using your your uh, the touch receptors in your mouth to feel that's too hot to drink. So uh, map making has... Um, come a, a very long way uh, over the years. I mean, for, for thousands of years, it was just people going out and exploring and, and kind of taking some measurements with, with crude instruments compared to what we have today. Um, but then we started out with aerial photography. And this is, these are some photos from one of my favorite photographers. His name is George Steinmetz. Uh, he does a lot of photography for National Geographic and uh, a few other things. And he specializes in aerial photography. And so he, you know, will get up in a, a, a paramotor that he calls it and he does parasailing and takes photographs like that. Um, or a, another thing that he does is he uses drones to take aerial photography. So think about all of the uh, advancements that have come in map, map, map making just from aerial photography. Uh, we, we can now see accurate pictures of coastlines and um, we know, you know where the mountains are because we've, we've flown over them and we can see exactly how this mountain chain looks from a map view rather than a profile view. Now, think about how much more things have changed since the 1970s when we introduced satellite uh, photography. Satellites have been orbiting uh, thousands of kilometers above Earth's surface, and they're being used to collect data. So satellites orbit Earth repeatedly. There's some different aerial photography satellites. Um, so this means that the image of the images of a location made at different times can be used to study that change. So what, what they're doing is they're actually monitoring a change at a location by taking numerous photographs. So for example, in 2005, when Hurricane Katrina hit the Gulf Coast, uh, they were able to see exactly what this hurricane did to the coastline. Um, they, had, had, they compared before and after images of the, the Delta region of Mississippi down in New Orleans, and they could see exactly how the, the weather had changed and really had just devastated that coastline. Now, images like these help map makers make drastic changes to maps that have been affected by natural disasters. Now think about how long it would take to monitor a change like this before. Uh, it, this would have taken months and months to be able to go out and measure the coastlines and, and kind of follow them around. Even with aerial photography, uh, it still would have taken a lot longer than what it does with satellites. Now, one of the advantages to satellites is that you don't actually have to be in space to take the photograph. Uh, just like I mentioned the photographer using drones to take photographs, um, 
that's a lot easier than you actually getting up in a plane and flying out over an area that costs a lot of money, takes a lot of fuel. But now we have these satellites already in space. And so by remote control, remote sensing, we can monitor things like uh, coastlines to see what's happening. We can monitor storms. We can uh, do all of these different things that would have taken forever to do before. Now, I'm going to share just a few um, of the uh, satellites that are used for specialized photography. Uh, this is called Landsat. And it's a, a, actually a series of satellites that's used to collect data uh, about Earth's surface. Um, they've been just doing a complete scan of Earth's surface every 16 days. Now, more recently, uh, it was used to map coastal waters of the United States. Now, so if we compare today's data, so the photographs that are taken recently uh, with that of say 20 years ago, um, we can see changes in the coastline. In fact, one of the things that they did that this was used for was to see changes in uh, coral reefs. Um, and like they compared data of Minnesota's wetlands and it helped track climate change and uh, helps uh, see the effects on uh, bird populations that migrate there. So Landsat has been used to contribute to the GIS database as well. Another one here. This is on the left here. This is Topex, uh, Topex Poseidon. Um, and then on the right, or yeah, on the right here is uh, Jason 8. And what happened was uh, Topex uh, was launched and it was used to uh, monitor or, or to determine ocean topography. So the actual topography of the ocean floor. And then later they launched the, the beginning of the Jason series and they worked in tandem. And so they were, they were measuring um, ocean floor. They're measuring uh, the, the circulation of uh, the water, they're, they're measuring sea levels, tides, they're measuring changes in climate, all of these things. So uh, it uses radar signals. And so the radar actually bounces off the ocean surface uh, and it measures bulges and valleys to within three meters. So here's some actual photographs of uh, changes in the ocean surface that were taken by the Jason 3. So you can see here You've got, you can see the, the changes in temperature. You can see um, the rise and swell of, of the ocean water. Um, and a lot of these, this being the Pacific Ocean, it's due to the El Nino or the La Nina um, air currents. And then the final one, is technology called C-Beam. And so this is a device that attaches to uh, a, a boat and it, it uses sonar to map the uh, bottom of the ocean floor. So C-Beam, they mount it on the ship and then computers will calculate the time uh, that a sound wave makes to bounce off of the ocean floor and return to the ship. And so what this does is it actually gives an accurate map to the operators of what the seafloor looks like. Uh, this is the kind of technology that was actually used in finding the, the Titanic and other shipwrecks. Um, so it, it lets them actually see the ocean floor without having to dive down and be on the ocean floor. Um, they, this technology is used um, by fishing fleets, it's used by drilling operators, it's used by uh, different scientists and things like that. Um, so think about just how much these advancements in technology have helped map making. Uh, this is why now you, we can pull up Google Maps and we can see a map of an area. And as we noticed in class today, sometimes they're not updated all that quickly um, because technically our 
school building isn't even on Google Maps yet. Um, but this is just for commercial use. So think about what scientists are using and what our government is using. Uh, they're using this, they're using real time data from satellites uh, to do all sorts of things. So map making has definitely come a long way from the days where uh, people were just doing hand drawings and or even when they were using a compass and a sextant and telescope. Now we're using satellites in space.